If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. I know it's prayer time, but people think we go down. We're going up. Gracious and eternal Lord God, we come before you tonight to say thank you. Thank you for another day and another opportunity to hold up the banner, to hold up the flag proudly. We thank you, Lord God, for the weather, for the gathering of communities and love and power in purpose, on purpose. We thank you, Lord God, for living in a city with elected officials who don't simply allow or tolerate or accept, but who stand with us in pride, with pride, as we celebrate. So we thank you, Lord God, for this night. We thank you, Lord God, for the lifting up of the banner. We thank you for each and every activity this week and every participant therein. Keep us keep us together, cover us, and remind us that we are not just community, but family. Bless us in our coming and our going. Bless us as we go to sleep and rise up in and with pride, because when this week is over, we will be standing as family. Thank you for love. Thank you for pride, a deeper love. Thank you for all that has brought us together and all of the things that will keep us together from these days forward. And for this and all the things you do so well, we say thank you. And that is why without one doubt, while we scream and we shout, that we keep on trusting, for your word is true. You've already done what you said you would do. We say thank you, Ashe, amen, and so it is. Keep it moving. Uh, we're going to have our remarks and special presentation from our honorable mayor, Rans Ben Parada. Good evening, good evening. Good, good. Not a funeral, we right? just want to. Congratulate first, uh, uh, of course, Susu and uh, all the work that you've been doing and, that, and, and the entire committee and the folks commission and everybody that's here uh, for another uh, successful opening to a Pride Week here in the city of Newark and around the country. We, uh, as we said earlier, in Newark, we just don't tolerate, we stand with, I like that. Uh, that's a good uh, uh, a statement. Uh, we, we appreciate that and, you know, obviously, we believe here in the city of Newark, when we say a fair and welcoming city, we're not just talking about immigrants, right? We're talking about immigrants, but we're also talking about everybody, right? We're fair and welcoming to everyone. And that is exactly uh, what we mean when we say that. Uh, no matter the language, the, 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 the color of your skin, the food you eat, the person you love or, or in love with, right? Uh, the, the dance, the, we, we are fair and welcoming to everybody in this community, and we try our best to make that happen. Somebody told me to address something uh, while I was up here, so I'm going to do that before I give out my uh, proclamation. You know, I, 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 I've never been shy, so, you know, sometimes I, I, I speak when I only have something to say. If I don't have anything to say, I'm usually quiet, you know, but if I have something to say, believe me, I'm going to say it. Uh, but there was an incident uh, in this city a little down the street some time ago. What North City Hall steps, somebody told me it was on City Hall steps, what North City Hall steps, it was down the street. Uh, from City Hall, and uh, it was a horrible sight to see when I saw the video. And I do want to clear up a few things because people said the police didn't respond. That's just not the facts. The police did respond, and they have uh, uh, perpetrators, in fact. Uh, what we do have to work on, though, is we know the relationship 
between the police and the community, but specifically the LGBTQ community, is not where it needs to be. Or, uh, 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 and we need better training and we need more communication and openness. So what we need was a victim to come forward and sign a complaint in order for us to do what we need to do. I know some of you might know this victim and maybe you could convince this person to come forward and uh, you know sign a complaint. But if not, the police still got their eyes and ears on these folks. Uh, but the law is the law. We can't do anything until we get a signed complaint. Uh, and if you if you can help us in that, we need that. Because then we take two people off the street, two people who we believe, uh, well, we know committed a crime. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I was uh, in a conversation with a few folks who uh, said to me, uh, you know, in the law enforcement world that, you know, they can't, you know, they can't pick these people up or say anything to them until something else happens. I said, well, we can pick them up because we obviously see that something happened on this video that shouldn't have happened, right? Even if we can't go all the way like we need to, somebody needs to be held and talked to and told that this is not acceptable in this city. So that did take place. I know there are other people who we thrive off of misinformation and we shouldn't do that. We should be getting the right information and spreading the right, because we don't want to create an atmosphere of fear. We want to show collectivity and unity as much as possible, because uh, violence and intimidation and racism and you know uh, all kind of homophobia, all that stuff cannot exist when we're united and we're together, right? It can't exist. We don't make, allow any room for it. But as long as there's miscommunication and rumor and crazy things and we feed off of that, then. It, it, it allows the opportunity for people to get away. We have to be together. It doesn't mean that everybody's gonna always agree, but at the end of that, we have to know that we're together. That we have to know that we're together. That this is our city, all of us, it belongs to all of us, and we are in charge of what happens here. And so when I say we the mayor, it means you the mayor too. It means that you also have to take accountability and responsibility for what's happening in your community and, and in the city as a whole, because the city is your community, right? Because when I say community, I don't mean LGBTQ community. When I say community, I mean the city of Newark, because I represent everybody, right? I represent everybody, that's what I mean. So when I say community, you are part of the community that I am talking about. So. You know, that being said, I didn't mean to go off on that little tangent there. The Reverend already spoke, you didn't need me to do that. Uh, we, we have a proclamation that we give out, and I want to give this uh, proclamation out this year uh, uh, to, uh, for Newark Pride Week, to Mr. Larry Lyons. Please, please come up. S sitting there taking photos. He ain't know what's happening. And, uh, you know, the founder of Brick City Varsity, I have a, a little bio here, has been a devoted volunteer to various LGBTQ and social justice issues since becoming a Newark resident 10 years ago. Mr. Lyons, along with social justice advocate Mr. Mervyn McConnell, founded uh, the Rashawn Braswell Memorial Fund in honor and memory of Rashawn Braswell, uh, a, New a Brazil, a New York LGBTQ youth who was brutally murdered and dismembered in 2005. Mr. Lyons' dedication to bringing a killer to justice paid off when an arrest being made in the case this year, uh, arrest was made in a case because of this gentleman. Right. Today, we thank Larry for his passion and devotion, not just to our city, but to our nation, and ensuring that our country lives up to its creed as one nation, and justice for all. This is for you. I think they want you to say a few words, right? Um, I'm shocked. Um, this is what it feels like to win a pageant. <laughs> um, I, there's, there's so much um, I would love to say, though. I'm uh, Aries, and I love to talk about myself. Um, so I'm just going to take a couple of seconds to address uh, some of the work that he pointed out. Uh, the Rashawn Brazel Memorial Fund was, was founded to inspire young men and women 
um, in urban areas to think differently about the values, the value of our bodies. Um, when I saw that this 19-year-old this, uh, had been killed and dismembered and the gay organizations weren't picking it up and the black organizations weren't picking it up, it said that we need to do more work at the intersection of those communities to make sure that everyone sees the value of our lives and not just the folks in uh, the, the niche where we exist. And so, thank you. Um, but justice has always been kind of slippery, and so having uh, someone brought into custody in that case does not mean that we get any less vigilant about insisting upon the value of our lives and the cooperation of the police. Um, if they are not protecting and serving us, even after they catch a suspect, we need to remain vigilant. And uh, in these political times, uh, that's uh, more resonant than at any other time in our history. So with all the young folks here, uh, I want to encourage you to connect with the movers and shakers here. Uh, the game show that I'll be hosting tomorrow, Stunts and Shows. Same as <laughs> uh, This is our fifth year of doing programming that's geared just toward the youth to make sure uh, that while we're doing wine tastings and film screenings, there's something fun and free uh, that folks can enjoy. And so to be recognized for doing that work in the city that I love is one of the biggest things that's ever happened to me. So thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, now we're going to have remarks from our, uh, she just tipped in here, tip top through the tulips, our Council President, Mildred Krupp. First, you got to get my hug. Just in case you don't know, she's one of my daughters. Um, and I love her to life, and there is absolutely nothing she can do about it. Um, there's something, uh, I was trying to think of what should I say uh, this evening, uh, other than I am so proud of the fact that um, you have become free. Free to be who you are, free to, be, to love the one you choose, free to be the person um, that you want to be, not someone else's definition of what you should be. And so I'm here this afternoon to support uh, this event. Uh, I do try to get here uh, on a regular basis. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to say to you, let my actions speak louder than words. Uh, I can stand before you and pontificate about uh, the value of being who you are and who you want to be. But you've already made that self-evident. And I am so glad to be joined by my colleague, the two women on the council. Looks like we're the only ones here. Uh, with the mayor uh, to suppression, and I'm not blaming anyone. Uh, we just made time uh, to be here. So to all of those who love me as I love you, um, God is going to continue to bless you, uh, to bless your relationships, and he is going to uh, provide for you, each one of you, um, the mate, that makes you happy. And that's what life really should be all about. Being with somebody who makes you happy. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. I, look, I'm just, I just want y'all to take a second and turn around. Look at this room. How beautiful is this room? Thank you for celebrating Pride with us. This is gorgeous. That's right, Reverend Kevin. Get that, get that shot. Hashtag new work pride. All right, thank you. All right, so she's no stranger to our community. She was a grand marshal one year and, and, and twirled on the floor the next year and danced the thons in all years. So the trans community knows her, the bi community knows her, the gay community knows her, and us lesbians know her. 
and we love her. And as I said, she's been named, titled, the mother of our LBGT community, Councilwoman Gail Cheneyville Jenkins. Hello, family. How you doing? Listen, it is an absolute honor to follow two elected officials who are here not because of politics, but because of a relationship, an understanding, a support, and a love for those family members in our community. And Larry, I know that you were extremely surprised. Where are you at, taking pictures? All right, I know you were extremely surprised because one of the things you did that touched my heart is you spoke to one of the historical elders. I'm gonna call him an elder because he called me something on the elevator that I'm not gonna repeat that starts with an itch. But he said I was a skinny one, so that's a good thing. And that is our own Gary Paul Wright. And when you turned around and said, I wanted to get a picture taken with you because you're a legend. We have to respect the bridge that brought us over. And those who came out and stood proud when it was not, not easy. And certainly, um, when the mayor, when you mentioned that you were an Aries, the mayor's an Aries, and I'm an Aries. So you know we Aries, we like to talk. All right, but we also like to lead and we also like to put our hands to the plow and make sure that whatever we can do to help, that we're there to help. I'm so honored to see everyone here. Um, June, thank you for being in the forefront. June Dottel, Burke. And certainly for the events that are taking place this weekend, for Newark having the Gay Pride week, not a day, not a second, but a week. It is important to us to make sure that you all understand that this week goes well beyond the week. We celebrate you, acknowledge you, and know that you make us who we are. And Reverend Taylor, thank you for the blessings and the prayers. Love you too. And Susu, thank you very much for making sure that the commission is working. Sharonda Love Wheeler, thank you for making sure that the parade is expanding. And thank you for everyone for being here because as Susu stated, look out into this audience. I remember when I came back on the council this audience wasn't packed like this. The diversity wasn't here, and the love that we feel is real, and I thank you all for it. And I'm gonna shut up so we can get out there because when it gets ready to rain, y'all know I got to get my head not wet, because I'm one of them black chicks that don't have a perm that um, hasn't been done recently. So I love you all, thank you. I love you too. Yeah, I know we're trying to beat this rain. But before I move on, I, I just want to acknowledge, some of you may know, some of you may not know, but even with the, the uh, uh, terrible situation that happened uh, last week, uh, the support of the police was there. The support of the city was there. The support of the agencies was there. Gary he picked up the phone, Ashonda, uh, love. But I want to ask our two openly gay police officers and lieutenants to come here. Don't stop. You know how sisters do. That's right. I'll put you on the spot. I, listen, put your hands together because when we call as commissioners, they are there. They represent the city, they represent us, they support us, they meet with us, they call us. My phone is always open, they know that. They're all kind of handsome too. Um, but I want to say thank you. Thank you for the calls. 
Thank you for checking on us. Thank you for saying what is it that we can do. Thank you for having those long meetings. Thank you for uh, uh, being open to, to what the community is saying that we need and want and being a voice for us. Not only that, but thank you for serving. Thank you for serving. And me personally is thank you for not hiding. Thank you for not hiding. That means a lot to me personally. And I just wanted to openly acknowledge that, that our police officers do stand with us and we don't take that for granted. Even though you may feel that we do, we don't. So I wanna say thank you, thank you for checking in and making sure we're all right. And so like the mayor said, I can honestly say I'm a speaking if I get in trouble, oh well, I get in trouble. But uh, uh, Manera, is Manera here? I know she's here somewhere. Hey, Manera. She called, she called me on Wednesday evening at 6 o'clock when it happened. And Thursday morning at 10 o'clock, I was in the mayor's office. And I would say that afternoon, Stacy, the mayor called the police, police chief, directors. It went boomerang down, and then an arrest was made. So let's not say the police is not doing anything. Gary Paul picked up the phone on a holiday weekend and said, whatever it is, we can do. So I, wanted, I want you to know we are united. So no matter what they're saying about Newark, Newark has shift. We have made a shift, so I just want to acknowledge that. And uh, we're going to also have now a selection, a musical selection, from our uh, uh, own Lavari Anthony, who is here. There he is. All right. So let me do it like they do on TV. Oh, How are you Lord. today? <laughs> Happy LGBT Pride, everybody. My name is Lavari. <laughs> Hello, Lavari. So what are you going to do for us today? Well, in honor of the flag raising, I figured I would do the national anthem. Is that okay with everybody? Yes. All right. Acapella. Acapella. All right, Newark. I grew up in New York and Queens, but now I'm everyone a proud. Everyone, please stand. What's that? Everyone, yes, everyone, please stand. Thank you. I grew up in Queens, New York. I'm a proud resident of Newark now. And Newark, thank you for not forgetting the LGBTQ in pride. Thank you. Because New York, we love you, but you only put pride this year. Let's not forget what it is. All right. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight all the ramparts we watch was so gallantly streaming and the rockets regular the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave Right. So I am going to uh, uh, ask, uh, I call him my sidekick. Uh, we shadow each other. Uh, he's in the arts, I'm in the arts. He loves the kids, I love the kids. 
He's a gay man, I'm a lesbian woman. He's fly and I'm fly. He said, when he, he said if he had to be a lesbian, he would want to be a susu. And that touched my heart. He will always have a place in my heart just for saying that. But I want to say he is a true friend. Sometimes he gets fierce and he don't want to be bothered with me, but I still call him and blow him off the phone. I still check on him when he's in the hospital. And even when he's not in the hospital, I still check on him. But I want to say it's definitely a pr pleasure in being on the commission with him. Uh, he's very, very busy. Uh, we even ran into each other on the West Coast. So I'll follow him and he follows me, but he's doing great work. I want to introduce to you the co-chair of the LBGTQ Commission, Mr. Rodney Gilbert. See how fierce we are? And I'm going to also ask our commission to please come up. Stand, yeah. Stand, come stand behind us. And I'm going to, you want to, you want to take the rest? We're on tag team? Let's do it together. Go ahead. We can tag team. We can tag team. That's how we, we do it. Team. All right. Let's give it up for our new commission. All right. So this is where we are right now. Uh, we're here. We're getting ready to introduce. Uh, Where's Olive? Where's Olive? 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 So, um, Hello, everyone. Happy Pride. We got to do better than that. We've come a long way. Put your hands together. Happy Newark Pride. I, I usually come up here and continue to fight and talk about us becoming a collective. Each year, we're becoming more and more of a collective and unified in spite of our differences, um, moving this which was started, Pride was started uh, across this country to fight discrimination. We are still in a place in the climate of this country to fight discrimination. And Newark, we're doing a damn good job. Yeah. Woo! So I'm going to introduce, without bastardizing any of the new members' names, um, Mateus, what's your last name? Baptista. Frank? Jordan. Frank Jordan. Taquan is an oldie, Taquan Williams. <laughs> huh? See, Robert House, that's not what I know do as, uh, my whole life. What's your name? And Olive, and of course, there's Sue Sue. Let's give a round of applause for the new commission. And with that said, as Gail talked about legacy, the previous commissioners who are in the house as well, who've led the way for us to be where we are today. So at this time, I have the honor and the privilege of introducing a young man who, when I, I don't know if I was ever in, but when I guess I came out, if I didn't, this is out of me tonight. Um, when I came out, was here doing um, work in the community. You know, it's one thing to be of the community. It's another to do the work that's in the community. Um, I admire him. He's been there when I needed support, and I hope his organization continues to grow and serve the community. At this time, I would like to bring up the executive director of the African American Office of Gay Concerns. Ladies and gentlemen, can we put our hands together for Mr. Gary Paul Wright? Woo! Woo! That young man. <laughs> I know, okay. See now, they didn't put me on the spot, okay? Everybody's putting me on the spot today. I'm gonna start with you, Gail. I can't believe you told everybody I called you a skinny bitch in the elevator, okay? Y'all gotta realize, Gail and I go a long way back, okay? We serve on the board of directors, board of trustees for Broadway House. And um, so, you know, I don't mean any disrespect, okay? You know, you said skinny, I'll yeah, there you go, okay. 
You looking good, girl, okay? Give me, give it up, give it up for Gail, baby, okay? And of course, mama, my mama, okay? Miss Mildred, baby, okay? You the one, okay? So, that's right, Papa is in the house, okay? Now, I know the last time some of y'all saw me, I had dreadlocks, okay? Okay, I was looking good, but you know, I was beginning to look like Stevie Wonder there, so. It was time to go. Everybody said, you're going to know when it's time to get rid of them. So it was time. As my husband, Peter, of 27 years, said, they was just clinging on for life. OK. But I got to tell you, I do have prepared remarks. But everybody said what I was going to say just about, OK? Even the mayor stole some of my stuff. OK, Susu, you stole some of my stuff. OK, so if I'm in my talk, I say something that y'all heard already. OK, they all was. They snuck into my house last night because I had my speech sitting out there on the desk, though. Okay, so. But I do want to thank everybody for having me here today, and it's great to be back in the house. Um, and I do bring you greetings also from the Essex County uh, Board of uh, LGBT uh, Advisory Board, because I'm a member of that, and uh, from Stevie D. Uh, I'm sorry, Joey D. Lord have mercy. I'm, I'm going to get kicked off of that commission by in a minute, okay? But um, I just want to say that we did have our Pride celebration on June 20th for the county. And I do want to say that we honored two of our finest people. One you just met, Cesare Adam. Ches, are you still here, honey? There we go. There you go. OK, he was honored. Yay. And our newest board of, uh, uh, member from the Board of Education, um, Reginald Bledsoe. Reginald, are you here? That's all right. OK, so we, we, we want to know that we honored those guys, OK? Um, now, I know a lot of y'all are on, on, on Facebook, right? Everybody on Facebook? A couple of days ago, they had a thing where, you know, you enter your stuff or you do you click on a button and it tells you certain things. And this past one, it was about um, the, the words you most use on Facebook. So I actually printed mine out, okay? And as you can see, my highest words were year, today, and Newark. And I got to say, I was really surprised that it had Newark. I did not realize how entrenched I was in Newark, New Jersey, that it would show up on my Facebook that many times, okay? Like number one. But then again, it also had uh, things like remember and uh, black and stay woke, y'all, okay? So this is kind of what I want to talk about real fast. Now, in 2003, I was a member of the uh, Municipal Council's Health Committee, and it was chaired by City Councilwoman Mamie Bridgeforth. And I clearly remember sitting in the council conference room one Monday morning, and it was right after a young lady had been stabbed and killed on Broad and Market at 3 o'clock in the morning. Now, we learned later on, or learned that morning, that she was a lesbian, and her name was Sakia Gunn. And she was returning home from a night out in New York City and uh, with, with her friends, and they were hit upon by a couple of straight guys. Okay, and they rebuffed their advances and Sakia was ultimately stabbed and she was killed. Um, now, I was a little taken back in that meeting because Mamie, our Councilwoman Bridgeforth, kind of steered the meeting towards, why was this young lady out at three o'clock in the morning? You know, where were her parents? Why did they allow her to be roaming in the streets? And I'm like, damn, I think, you know, the message here is that she was killed because she, had, you know, she wouldn't, you know, cow down to the advances of uh, two guys that were like hitting on her. You know, they were killed by some grown-ass man that was trying to pick up these babies. And I got to tell you, at that time, the community came together, and that's how Newark Pride Alliance was formed. Now, if you fast forward a couple of years, uh, one year later and four months later, four young people in the Balesburg section on a playground one evening were murdered. Well, three were murdered, and one did survive. Um, and we found out at that time that, um, well, we didn't know at the time, but these, they were killed by these guys from the uh, MS-13 gang. Now, we, another meeting in the city council counts, uh, conference room, and they were talking about, well, you know, these were just young kids, but we were trying to say, hey, they were part of the gay community. And I remember um, Dana Roan, Councilwoman Dana Roan, who was an open lesbian, uh, was there and she was like, no, 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 let's not change the subject. These were our kids that were killed. We need to be doing something. The authorities need to know that this is what's happening in our community. So today, the big elephant in the room, which I was going to talk about, the mayor already covered, 
was a, the uh, uh, beatdown of a young trans woman uh, on the streets of Newark. Now, I know y'all have seen it. You've seen the videos on, on um, Facebook and, and World Star and all this kind of stuff. And everybody was like appalled, like, how could y'all let this happen in Newark? What are y'all doing in Newark? What the hell are y'all doing in that city? So, I mean, my phone was ringing off the wall. Um, uh, and then emails started coming in. And there were like different stories, of, different versions of the same story going around. I mean, I got one story that said that the young lady was murdered in the streets of Newark. So I'm like, you know, this is like kind of crazy, but, 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 but it is happening in our streets and we need to talk about it. We need to do something about it. Um, my staff, Amina, was like hit the streets and she found out and got all the tea and came back and told us what was going on. And then I started getting phone calls. I got phone calls from, uh, let, me, let me get this right. I got it from, um, from Susu Stewart. Stewart, I got a phone call. Manara, Manara you, got, you gave me a phone call. Um, uh, 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 Garden State Equality, um, the uh, action group in Orange, Orange, South Orange and Maplewood, and everybody was talking about this in the community center. And then I got a call from James Creedle. And y'all know, when you get a call from James Creedle, okay, Dean Creedle, y'all know, the stuff done hit the fan, okay? So it was like, oh Lord, this is like, this is it, okay? This is like the real world. But you know what, the outrage was like immediate. The community immediately said, we need to do something about this. We cannot like push this under the, under the rug. We need to like take action now. And that's kind of what I'm here today is to just have this be a call to action. We did get a call from the mayor's office as well and they found out that we had a connection with the young lady in question. And we called her, we talked to her, we arranged a meeting, we did all of this on her own terms. We set up a meeting for Tuesday um, and um, um, Ms. Hillsman, um, Stacy Hillsman from the mayor's office showed up, Susu came and showed up, um, but unfortunately the young woman herself did not show up. But for whatever reason, because she may have had her reasons, maybe it was the publicity, maybe it was, uh, you know, the fact that she was like outed like that. I mean, I respect her reasons for not showing up, okay? But we, t we did tell her that we needed her to come and sign something and, and issue a, a complaint. And that still may happen. It still may happen, but the mayor was not lying to you. The police were on it. They got the guys in custody, but you know, law is the law and you can only hold somebody for so long. So unfortunately, we're still waiting for something to happen. Maybe justice will be served, but those guys don't get it. They don't get it. They will not get away with this. I promise you this. So I will stand up because it's hot in here. I will stand up and say, you know, more than just, hey, y'all, we need to work together because everybody's already saying that. But what we need to do is stop talking and take some action. If we are to be a community, an LGBT community, then we need to start acting like a community. This means, and if I could borrow a term from Reverend, Reverend Kevin in one of your books, get off your ass and do something. Now, he was talking about Jesus riding into the city and getting off that ass, but y'all need to get off your ass and y'all need to do something. Y'all need to, if you see something, say something. Y'all, you know what I'm saying, okay? Y'all need to get mad, okay? Ain't nothing wrong about getting mad. Um, and if, if the people that you, the authorities that you talk to, if they don't act accordingly, then you go above their heads. And if you still don't get any satisfaction, you go above their heads. I know, you go above my head, I don't care. Get it done, all right? We would call the FBI, we would call the Essex County Sheriff's Department, we would call, wait, is it time to go? Okay, I told you. Anyway, all I can say is y'all. Okay, okay, all right. So let's hold everybody responsible and accountable, okay? I love y'all, I'll talk to y'all later. Happy Pride, okay. We're gonna, we're gonna move this along rather quickly based on rain, no disrespect, love you all. In the words of love, at this time, we would like to bring up Dr. Fleming from HMI to give us a moment of silence. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to start by thanking Mayor Baraka, the members of the City Council, Susu Stewart, Chair of the LGBTQ Commission, Sharonda with Newark Pride, and the Newark Police Department for allowing me the platform to lend a few more remarks today. As we embark upon the 2017 Pride celebration here in Newark, I would like for us all to remain cognizant of the fact 
that the current political climate in our country has taken the band-aid off of a multitude of our country's most deplorable attitudes. Among them are hatred, lack of compassion, blatant racism, and extreme acts of violence. In recognition of these stark disparities, violence and discrimination faced by LGBT communities and trans youth, especially across this country, we as a community must stand strong. Earlier this week marked the 50th anniversary of the 1967 Newark riots, and the city has progressed in so many ways. Believe it or not, the city of Newark has some of the most robust LGBTQ programmings in the country, okay? And I can tell you that because I've worked in Orlando, I've worked in Miami, I've worked in Washington, D.C., I've worked in Virginia, I've worked in Maryland, and now I'm putting in my service here in Newark, New Jersey, and I know that to be true. So of that, we should be proud. So my hat goes off to AAOGC, to NJCRI, to the Newark Pride Alliance, to the LGBTQ Center, to the Essex Rain Foundation, and to Rutgers University, and that company, HMI, stands proud. Last year, HMI was awarded one of 18 federal grants in the country providing services to victims of child sexual abuse. We were the only LGBTQ provider in the country selected right here in Newark. And as much as I like to think that HMI does such great work, we did not do it in a vacuum. As I look around this room, I know that many of you wrote letters of support and MOUs so that HMI could stand to represent the collective community here in Newark. Our community is most powerful when we all work together from the political arena to public service, even as community partners. I truly believe that everyone here today has a vested community interest in protecting the rights of all of the city uh, residents. So before I close, I would just like to acknowledge Hannah Mori from Senator Booker's here for all of the great work that they're doing locally and nationally. I'd like to thank my colleagues from the national office and HMI New York for being here. And I'd like to thank my young people from HMI New Jersey. Wave your hands, guys. Hey. Don't be shy. <laughs> so as we celebrate Newark Pride 2017, let's do so with a, re a renewed sense of community, a willingness to help, and the remembrance that to whom much is given, much is required. Thank you. So. Next up is Cindy Goncalves, who will do a poem from us. She's from our community. Here you go, Cindy. Thank you. Thanks. Hi. Um, I was gonna like open up with like something, but that was so beautifully said that I'm just gonna leave that in your hands. Um, thank you, um, Newark LGBTQ Commission. Thank you, Newark Pride Commission. Thank you, everyone, for being here. You guys are beautiful. Um, I actually wrote this poem about four years ago, and I've kind of evolved with it. And the, I don't know if you can hear me. And the, um, the, the title has changed every time I read it. And I realized that as I, I get older and as I kind of navigate this world of queerdom, like I am learning so much more and it's changed so much over the course of about three years. Um, so this one is called uh, Seven Years, uh, 15 Days, which is the exact amount of time since I came out to my parents. Yeah, thank you. It has been seven years and 15 days since I last saw your smile. And not that half-assed doing it because I know I should smile, but the one that would fly from your spine and land its feet on the corners of your eyes, that smile you gave me when I won that award you could barely pronounce, but squeezed every letter of it into the hug you wrapped me in, whispering in your broken English, I am proud of you. 
I am not the girl I was seven years and 15 days ago. I am not lost in the shadow of your expectations, not keeping tabs on your preaching remarks, ambitions, not tracing the shoreline of your shipwreck anymore. They are floating in directions guided by the waves in my short hair and the ripples in my lover's matte-finished lips. No, biting my nails after seven years and 15 days is not because of that thing. But I don't expect you to understand that gnawing at these tips is the fastest release for the teeth clenched on my left rib. My pulse is so much louder now, 49 times louder now. It dances gaily at dimly lit bars where safety holds me by the hips, digs her face into my neck. I am prouder now. Speak up for the 49 that could have been me. I cannot be silenced now. I won't need that smile. In another seven years, at 15 days, when I am 32 and a half years into the woman you raise, when you are sitting across from me, stirring the coffee we know is not in your mug, just to avoid eye contact with my friend, my she and her, my new life, my laugh lines, my don't forget your lunch, my she'll come around, my I love you, my new I am so proud of you. Happy New Work Pride. At this time, we have the one, the only, the great, she the other sharp one. Uh, she is the president of North Pride, Sharonda Wilbur. Yeah. Love. It's been a long, long time coming. Uh, I'm real excited. Hello, everybody. I'm Love. Call me Love, please. Happy Newark Pride, happy Newark Pride, happy Newark Pride. Oh man, thank you everybody who spoke from the mayor, the council people, pastor, Ashonda, I think she said it because I always like to say that and point that out about Newark, New Jersey and our LGBT community, is that it is so rich. We have things that other people and organizations and educational institutions and council that do not, that back us and other people don't have. Learning how to pull it all together and make it work for our community is one of the things I'm here to do. I'm telling you what I came here to do. And, 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 and it's gonna happen. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. So anyway, before, I just wanna say, we're gonna raise the flag. Um, it's raining outside. Uh, I would like to acknowledge some of the people and some of the companies that made today happen. Uh, we have um, representatives from University Hospital here who are one of our sponsors. We've made another great partnership with the Greater Newark, um, the tourism people. So yeah, when you're traveling, you're going to know Newark got a thriving LGBT community. Um, RPM Development. Have you seen the building down the I mean, down the street on 999 Broad Street? Rutgers University, who are always one of our main supporters here in the town, uh, in our community. Um, also, Prudential Insurance Company is a major sponsor for us today. And none other than Uber, who also has a representative here. Uber is another sponsor of New York Pride today. Now, normally, normally I would read the event, um, but I don't think we have time for that. We have given out some pride guides, and one of the additions to it is that there's a map in there that has all of our events listed, and if you see it on the website, you'll be able to pinpoint and find directions and get you there. And if you, if you need a ride, call Uber. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. So anyway, I can't, I couldn't, I can't um, do this without thanking my board, First June um, Dalberton, who is the founder of Newark Pride. Mm -hmm. Another one of my board members I see in the house is Mr. Kenrick Ross from Urban and Out. Put your hands together. Um, we're the only ones here today, so that's it. I mean, travel safe. Um, have a great time. Let's give it up for love one more time. Yeah.